hello everyone hello everybody thank you so much for having me today and thank you for an opportunity to share my experience with you as Jakob already told and stole a part of my uh, introduction speech uh, <laughs> my name is Maria Leonova I'm head of marketing team in Ukrainian media called Kromatska and uh, at the end of 2020 I was uh, responsible for the launching of uh, another of our social media TikTok and uh, it was pretty good and even unexpected results for us. So today I will tell you about our experience, uh, the result that we already have achieved, uh, and um, also about um, the perspectiveness of TikTok and uh, why it can be useful for media. Um, so now I will try to share with you my presentation. Um, yeah, the topic is uh, uh, TikTok in the big media picture, and um, maybe after that your perception of TikTok will change and uh, someone will discover it is a promising platform. Maybe yeah, maybe no, we'll see and let's discuss after. Um, so I want to start with the story about uh, the media I work for, um, who we are and uh, why we are so special. Uh, Hromatske is one of the few uh, Ukrainian independent media and I want to put an accent here because it is very painful story and it is very important story because around uh, like over I think 70% of uh, the media in Ukraine are owned by oligarchs and uh, we are uh, but we are truly independent we literally have no owner and Hormatsky was founded uh, by a group of independent journalists in 2013 at the times that uh, when there was a total censorship in media and people really needed someone who will tell them truth and uh, here we are yeah um the one of our main features is that we are fully transparent in all of our processes uh, for example, we are uh, only one nationwide Ukrainian media who makes public our annual budget so that, um, for example, anyone who donate us and want to support us financially could open the document and uh, see uh, what the money were spent on. Um, yeah, so um, our content is watched uh, by 50 million people every month across all of our platforms and our main goal is to explain complex topics using very, very simple language and why it is important for us, I will explain you in the following slide. Um, <clears throat> so why it is, um, it is works in that way. Um, the word and our name, Hromatskia, means community in Ukrainian language, and this title like defines our entire future strategy uh, of creating content, and it defines our, the way uh, how we communicate with people, because we try to be as simple as possible, as closer to the audience as possible, and we work a lot with the user-generated content format, and uh, we moved away from that stereotype that television is expensive and that television is somewhere too far away from uh, regular people's problems. Um, we, uh, in the media market, we position ourselves as a multi-platform media. So the topics that we are talking about, we cover in different formats and uh, on various platforms, like on website, YouTube, and six different social media. And um, in 2020, we abandoned classic television broadcasting and focused on digital platforms in order to be closer to the, audi to the audience and in order to gain um, younger audience. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, this slide is about our journey uh, in TikTok and our way how we got millions of views here. And uh, before I start telling you some tips and uh, our story, I must say that before we decided to uh, break into TikTok, we also had this stereotype in our head that TikTok is watched only by uh, children who are like 10 years old or something. That's not true. And uh, later I will give you some proofs why that's not true. So uh, when we already decided to go into TikTok and we registered there our account, um, we uh, understand it that our strategies there 
need to uh, needed to coincide with the strategy of our editorial team and uh, you know that every uh, like uh, political or information ba uh, like based um, media often uh, covers very difficult topics like politics economics bureaucracy uh, war in donbas in ukraine and so on and we um, realize that we need to find a balance between these difficult topics that our editorial team covers and between the humorous and joyful way in which TikTok works. And uh, we found a solution and solution uh, is called Vox Populi format for those who don't know what it is. It is when the journalists uh, uh, like go on the streets and ask people opinions on different topics. And this format is highly recommended by me uh because of two reasons um the first one is because vox populi makes media much more closer to the people the second one it's because uh, people's behavior people always love watching other people uh especially people who watch the content love that feeling that they are smarter than those who answer the questions <laughs> um so um our first uh, results here, our first achievements, uh, was a million views that we got just in four weeks. And as I already told you previous, uh, that was pretty unexpected results for us. And now we have up to 3 million people that watch our content every month. And just for comparison, um, this, the same numbers have our YouTube channel that has been existing for seven years. So, um, we can conclude from this statement that um, it is pretty easy uh, in TikTok to be famous, but uh, if you uh, have chosen the right strategy and uh, the right format. Uh, with the Vox Populi format, we already interviewed 300 people since October 2020. That's a pretty big number. Yeah, and uh, for that kind of work and uh, for managing TikTok, you don't need a huge team. Uh, our team consists only of a presenter and part-time cameraman and editor. That's all that you need uh, like to be successful. Um, the next one um, uh, th that I want to talk about is um, to move far away like from our numbers and to focus on the bigger picture of this platform, yeah? Um, and uh, about the um, numbers that gives us an understanding why TikTok is perspective and why it can be interesting for media. As you can see, uh, as for February 2021, TikTok has about 1 billion monthly active users. and. Uh, just think about that um, number, the next one. A user opens the TikTok app eight times per day. Um, this gives us a reason to say that uh, in TikTok, there is a, a huge uh, competition between uh, content creators, as well as uh, it is a huge opportunity uh, to like engage more people to your brand and to, um, to gain more and more uh, views. Yeah, and uh, what is more important and interesting for media is that TikTok user base is aging up. Um, this fact uh, convinced us to break into in TikTok. This was th the last thing um, that we talk about uh, because uh, because of our uh, agenda, because uh, we always cover very difficult topics. Is it was very important for us to have much older audience than 10 years old children, yeah? Uh, so as you can see on the slide, uh, people uh, aging from 20 to 29 are almost 30% of the whole TikTok audience. And uh, that's more than enough to find your audience there and to promote your content successfully. But there is another problem. Uh, many, many media are inactive on TikTok because they don't understand uh, how to adapt their content there. And especially I saw uh, many examples um, of big TV channels that just download in TikTok their regular TV shows. And in this way, they expected to get millions of views. And my personal opinion is that this is a step to look the funeral of your account because if you register in TikTok you should appreciate its rules and you 
like mustn't bring your own rules and your TV standards uh, here uh, because it, it, it's like very different planet. Um, yeah, and uh, on this slide, I want to go even further and deeper and talk about what TikTok can do uh, for media in the long run, yeah? And uh, what does it mean for uh, like the big media picture and why uh, it can be really useful for you? Uh, first one, um, TikTok can increase your brand awareness. Uh, yeah, because TikTok allows you to reach an unlimited number of audience with little effort and without money for advertising. And for example, we had a video that uh, took us like 30 minutes to shoot. And um, um, after a couple of days, it uh, gained like over 1 million of views. So you put a little effort, little resources and uh, take back a lot of benefits. Isn't it cool? Uh, so yeah, the number of views directly affects your brand awareness. Uh, and uh, so that media can quickly build your uh, its uh, loyal audience. And uh, why I'm talking about loyal audience, because it is very, very important part of your audience. Uh, for example, if you decided to go to the membership system, for example, and to find the way of like another way to um, a source of your income, uh, you really need to find your loyal audience, your brand lawyers, uh, your brand ambassadors uh, who will support you and who will ready to support you financially. And uh, the first step could be on TikTok why you like can't start yeah uh, the second um, the second thing that tiktok can be a way to rejuvenate your audience uh, you know um, as less and less people tend to consume content on tv uh, the media really need to think about how they uh, will distribute its content um, on different digital platforms and how they will gain a, a new audience that is constantly getting younger uh, there is uh, one interesting opinion that I tend to share also, yeah, that young people are fleeing from where the older people come. Uh, for example, um, when our parents uh, learned how to use Facebook, we like abandoned Facebook and registered in Instagram. When our moms uh, start messaging in direct in Instagram, we start learning how to register in TikTok. Um, so younger generation want to be alone and it's very logical that they create new rules and new formats in their bubble and uh, you can see the numbers on the screen that TikTok has 60% of its audience under the age of 30 and um, if media decide to register there and to work in this platform they shouldn't like they should remember this number and they should consider how to speak to the to these young audience in their language and not uh, bring their rules here. And uh, what I can also add here, um, why it is also profitable for media to have younger audience yeah, in its uh, package. <laughs> um, because um, young people are very active. They uh, tend to support media financially they uh, can create content with you so called ugc yeah um they are um, they can proofread in you without hate speech and uh, they are what is more important yeah the younger people preferences force the media to talk about very progressive things like um i don't know climate change gender equality and so on yeah older generation don't do that um, the third thing, um, maybe most interesting, most important here, um, it's about um, monetization. Yeah, and uh, every media, I think, start to think about um, in the a, like in the times of global pandemic. Um, uh, about uh, every media start to think about how to diversify their source of revenues, uh, how to find uh, other ways to. Uh, monetize their content and you know um, despite the fact that TikTok gives you uh, like many views for free it does not yet, yet have an opportunity um, to monetize your content um, but 
like YouTube does that, yeah, TikTok doesn't. Uh, at the same time, this doesn't mean that uh, this platform cannot be monetized. And uh, in my uh, screen, you can see at least four ways how you can earn money on this platform. And, um, you know, um, even a year ago, many brands uh, didn't think about registering in TikTok because they also had this, um, this thing about um, about very young audience, like children, 10 year old, yeah? Uh, but that's not true anymore. And um, uh, big brands didn't register in TikTok because they think that there is audience that can't afford to pay the products that brands uh, want to sell there. Uh, but uh, that's not true anymore. And now it is a very good uh, time and a very good place uh, to register and to try uh, TikTok as another path to monetization. Um, to continue this topic uh, and to talk about culture and language, you know, a couple of days ago, I was here in this conference and uh, listened to my colleagues talking about uh, the pan-European experience in media. And they discussed the fact that it is very important for each country uh, to develop and share its culture and speak in, in its own language, not only in English. And TikTok also shares this philosophy and TikTok loves that. And um, this recommendation to share your culture is uh, very relevant now for Ukraine uh, because uh, because now um, we still have uh, in our trends, especially in YouTube trends, we still have Russian speaking bloggers, Russian bloggers, Russian propaganda and so on. And uh, this is the real fact, despite that, uh, despite the fact that uh, it has been seven years since Russia occupied uh, like part of Ukrainian territories. Uh, but our people still tend to watch Russian content. Mm, but you know, um, in TikTok, we managed to avoid this situation uh, because the first, uh, the first Ukrainian TikTok bloggers uh, created a community that promotes Ukrainian culture and language and their initiative become, um, became really uh, successful, I must say. And um, uh, what I can add here, it's um, like the philosophic like statement is what unites people uh, always get better engagement and culture, language, and uh, these things uh, always unite people. Um, and the last one, um, I think the last point about new journalistic formats does not require additional comments, but uh, you know, television is no longer fashionable, especially in Ukraine. And uh, uh, media should quickly find a way um, how they will distribute their uh, content and how they will gain younger audience and how they will um, connect with them on different platforms. And uh, TikTok is a good chance to experiment. Uh, and uh, here you can, you still can even become uh, a trendsetter. Who knows? Yeah. Um, maybe. Uh, Pre last uh, my slide, yeah. Uh, if um, I managed to convince you and you already want to register in uh, your brand in TikTok, uh, there are some practical tips that you should use. And from this list, uh, I want to pay your attention on uh, on the two things. The one is about um, recognition. You should be recognizable by creating your own style, your own color and tone of voice. Uh, this is very important in order to be memorable um, in the thousands or even millions uh, content that is uploading to TikTok every day. Um, and the second one is about is is very simple, but very very important. It's about um, plan planning responsibly. Uh, we uh, create uh, the content plan of our TikTok every Thursday, and uh, by that time we already know what topics will be covered by our journalists the next week and uh, with what accents uh, that would be. And based on the editorial content, um, we uh, create our TikTok content plan. Um, and um, 
But besides that, you also need to be flexible and uh, just try to catch the wave. You know, if something urgent will happen, you need to have resources to quickly um, react on that and to quickly uh, create the content and to upload it to, to, to TikTok uh, in order to like um, gain more and more audience and um, a lot of views. For example, um, when there were suddenly very, very terrible weather in Ukraine and uh, very terrible snowfalls, um, our host uh, just went on the street, just fell into the snow and just uh, like illustrated uh, how all Ukrainians felt at that times and at that weather. That was very simple, very quick, very fun, but also meaningful. And uh, the last thing uh, I want to say and to finalize my presentation is about um, don't hesitate yeah, to experiment and always keep things simple because the people that uh, read you, that watch you, they are like ordinary people and you are too. Um, so keep things simple and uh, try to gain the love of your audience um, and they will love you too. So thank you so much. Uh, I hope that that, that was useful. <laughs> thank you so much, Maria. Um, uh, sort of before we jump onto the, the next one, um, I, I just wanted to share a couple of quick questions from the chat and I, maybe I'll take them um, in the other uh, order than they came in. So did you find it difficult? So TikTok has this image of being not a very serious um, uh, platform. Um, at the same time, sort of, I'm, you know, I'm personally a follower of the Khromatsky TikTok. I, you know, I know that you've managed to tackle quite a few sort of, um, uh, you know, tricky topics, especially about finance, personal uh, issues, you know, social issues and things like that. But can you say a little bit more about, you know, how did you manage to sort of put serious topics into a platform that many people see as just being very lighthearted? Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you just need to realize that uh, every one of us uh, deal with that difficult uh, topics in our lives, but in very simple way. So we, we just uh, uh, imagine ourselves on, on the place of that uh, person and just to tell that in very, very, very simple language, dealing with the uh, many stereotypes that uh, uh, yeah, exist on that way. So, yeah, so actually, this is really interesting. So one of the things that you do is you um, in, in the TikToks is that you will lean into the stereotypes, you will put them up uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 up front and then have people react to them, right? That's kind yeah. of one of the big things that happen that is happening. Alessandro, am I answering the, the, the correct question? By the way, please feel free to give feedback on how I am uh, transferring these questions. Uh, I, I, I think uh, I think I can add uh, something uh, for the answer to Alessandro Di Stefano. Uh, you know, we faced difficulties uh, when we shared uh, when we shared the content about war in our country and about revolution uh, that happened in 2013, 2014 in our country, uh, because TikTok um, TikTok recognizes that content as very sensitive and uh, that shares very aggressive uh, you know, emotions. And we didn't expect that because this is a part of our history and we shared that shootings of uh, that scenes across different platforms. And we didn't expect that TikTok will ban this kind of uh, video. Uh, so yeah, and after that, we saw um, like very little amount of views on the following videos, uh, but now everything is okay. So now we are very careful with, uh, mm -hmm. with like sensitive content about war revolution and something uh, where, where um, I don't know, people have uh, uh, put forces or so on. Yeah. And um, thank you. And then uh, finally, I think there's a question around sort of brand identity. How do you make sure that people understand that this is your Chromatsky's TikTok and not just somebody random? If you can just uh, sort of answer that very briefly, because I think I'd like to come back to this topic about, mm -hmm. you know, how do you create a consistent identity across social media for the, the end of our discussion today? But if you can share a few words. Yeah, we created a common identity, thankfully, to our uh, brilliant designer. But there are some tips 
clips um, in TikTok, we um, we have chosen the one person who represents us on this platform. It is only one host. Like um, uh, like in YouTube, we have I think five hosts of different shows. In TikTok, we have only one. Uh, the second thing is uh, um, we we have our brand color is like deep orange, and this color is always can be seen in every piece of video. It's like 25th, uh, you know, shoot. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, also we, um, we tend to shoot um, one kind of videos like Vox Populi. Uh, the audience in Ukraine know that this format is behind of us. And uh, everyone who will do the same uh, in the, like next month, next years, they will just repeat after us. Fantastic. Thank you.